Hi everyone, this is Cindy with Creating with the Heart, and I thought we would make an album together. Now the album I'm going to be making is another envelope mini. Now the one that I made previously with you guys was this one. And this one uses the A2 size envelopes, which is just a regular sized envelope. Okay, it's, and it's, it's a mini, but it, it does pack a punch. The one that we're going to be making, I need to set this down somewhere. The one, the one we're going to be making today uses the Michaels envelopes. Now these envelopes, let's see if I can find the envelopes here to show you guys. These envelopes, they measure seven and a quarter by five and a half five and a quarter I'm sorry seven and a quarter by five and a quarter so they're pretty good size envelopes you're definitely going to be um, making a bigger sized album so I'm using five envelopes I'm also going to be using the cards that go with them so five cards and if you're making this along with me you can use any size envelope and card that you want if you have a six by six you could use that it works well any size envelopes that you want to use and that's why I'm showing you guys a different one I had to make an album anyway I thought I would show you guys now the paper I'm going to be using is Bohemian Bazaar and I'm using the 12 by 12 but the 8 by 8 would work okay I think for matting and everything like that but you're probably going to need um, at least one or two sheets probably two sheets of the 12 by 12 or a coordinating 12 by 12 um, paper if you decide to use 8 by 8 for the size we're using. So we're going to go ahead and get started and I'm going to prep our envelopes. So again I'm using five envelopes because I find, I gotta be honest with you, I find five to be um, a pretty big book and sometimes I can't fill those books. I, mean, I can put like 60, 50 to 60 you know pictures in one of these depending on you know how I make it so to, to prep your envelopes all I do is I take my ATG along the sticky part that you might normally lick I'm not gonna lick it we're gonna seal our envelopes closed so you want to do that for all of your envelopes And we're going to do that. So you just want to do it along the sticky part because, you know, you just want to seal it closed, but you want to leave the opening because we're going to be using that for a pocket. So go ahead and just seal them up. I'm using black because the Bohemian Bazaar is a very, very bright, bright paper. So um, black is kind of nice. Tones it down just a tad, even though I like the bright paper. Sorry, my camera's jumping a little bit. I like the bright paper. Um, but white would look really good or nice as well, I think. Okay, so once you've closed your envelopes, and it's jumping around a lot. If it keeps jumping, then I'm going to have to do something because that's going to... Um, drive you all crazy if it keeps jumping like that. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take out your cutting tool here and I'm going to cut them alongside because I'm going to be making a, um, a vertical album versus the horizontal. Okay, so I'm not going to go this way, I'm going the long way. So what you're going to do is you're going to snip about an eighth of an inch or so off of each of your sides. Okay, so I just want to cut a tad here. Alright, so just cut that and cut here. So you just want to cut it so you open it. And I'm going to do these for all of my envelopes, and you're going to end up with something that looks like this, like a tube. So one end will end up going into my spine, and the other end 
will be open for a pocket and that's where the card is going to fit through and there's tons of these albums you know done all the time normally I just show you the finished product but I've had a lot of requests to show how I make the album so um, if this part you know bores you I'm terribly sorry um, but I will have a finish album now I've I am a teacher, so I normally am off, well, I am off during the summer, so um, while I'm making this envelope, I've, I've recently gone back to work, and so things take me a little bit longer to, you know, upload and prep and all that kind of stuff, because I don't have as much time. So, and let's see, how many have I done? I think I have one more left. One more left. And I've sort of prepped my paper. I'm hoping I cut it the right size because sometimes depending on how much I end up trimming off of these, you know, my, my mats sizes change. Okay. So here I have put this down here in case I need it. So here I have my envelopes. This is how I look or how they look. Okay. So I initially cut my paper I'm going to use for matting at seven and an eighth by five inches. I thought that'd be good enough, so we'll have to see. And this is my paper all cut down. And what I did was um, I don't have the Tim Holtz black suit. Oh no, I lost something that I need. Oh, here it is. So I'm just using my Memento Tuxedo um, Black, and I'm just using this tool, and I just went along and just kind of distressed the edges with some black ink. It just seems to kind of blend in better onto the black envelopes. All right, so let's see how my matting, oh, my matting is going to be perfect on this one. Okay, so now the next step, I usually, I mean, sometimes I do it differently, but generally I like to mat my initial pages right away before I put the pages on my spine. And the reason is, is that I find that it's a little hard to work with once the book is put together. I find it much um, easier to do it this way. All right, and there we go. So that's going to just fit like this. And then we have a back right here. And I want to have some pockets. So I'm going to create some additional pockets besides just the side pocket. Okay. And get that. This is like move that over a little bit. Okay. So here is my first matted page. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I think I'm just going to mat this one and then the next one I'm going to create a pocket. And I'm going to show you how I do that in just a second. I hope I have some black paper handy because I forgot that I was going to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and mat this side. Okay, so that's this side. Now, this is the side that I'm going to do my pocket. All right, so to create the pocket, I'm going to use a piece of black cardstock and get my ruler. Okay, so the width is roughly five inches. It looks like five and an eighth, so I'm going to go with five inches. 
All right. And I think I would like it about, what, do I, what would I like? Four, it's a little bit much. Maybe three and a half. Okay, so it's five inches across, so I'm gonna add an inch. So I'm gonna cut my paper at six inches by four and a half. Well, no, by four, because I want it three and a half inches. So you add in half an inch to the size that you actually want it to be. So I'm gonna cut this at, let's see. I'm gonna cut it at five and a half. Oops, I cut it at six. Five and a half. So you want to cut, so if you want it to be five by four, you cut it at five and a half by four and a half. So you want to add that half an inch. And I'll show you why. Okay, so I've got my paper slightly bigger. Okay. And this is what I'm going to do. Let me get out my. Okay, so here this is, and you can, um, I probably should have cut it an inch bigger. Oh, well, it's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to score um, at a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to do, turn this around, and a quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to spin this around, and I'm going to do it at a quarter of an inch. So the reason why I normally do it at half an inch, I just put on the spot because I'm on the, that's not going to work. Okay. I cut it too short. Okay, so this is why I usually have stuff prepared because I can't think when I'm on camera because um, I don't really do math. Let me see, what do I have here? I'm trying to look for a piece of um, black cardstock. Oh, this works. Okay, so let's... Say goodbye to those measurements. I, I need, actually need to add a half an inch for each side. So if I want it five inches, it does need to be six inches. I did it right the first time. And for three and a half, I need four and a half. So I'm, this is going to work out much better. So you want a half an inch all around. And the reason why you want that is because that is what you're going to fold and create your pocket. So I'm terribly sorry that I screwed that up. So this one is measuring at six by four and a half, and then I'm scoring at half an inch because the quarter inch is just too small to attach. So once you've done that and you folded it down, then what I do is I usually cut the little corner that I've created. So you have this little um, corner right here. So I cut that out and it creates a pocket like so. So to attach the pocket, you just do score tape. So I do score tape on all three sides. So the next one I will scrub. Okay. Because it's live. Okay, so now this is going to get attached. Right here at the bottom, like so. Alright? And I'm actually gonna put it close to the edge that's not gonna get attached to the spine. It just makes this part easier to attach. Okay? So you're going to take your score tape off. I take the two sides off um, first. And then put that down. So then it's like this. Right? So then you place it down. and you have yourself a little pocket, okay? It's very easy. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mat this. So this is now, this one says four, 
by five. So I'm gonna cut it. Let's see, the five inches looks fine. So I'm gonna cut this down just a tad so I can mat. So here we go. And there's the matting. So it's a little upside down because you guys are it's just easier. It's hard for me to work upside down. So someday when I get my dream room, I will have this awesome setup um, to do videos. Right now, I got to go with what I've got, which is not, you know, horrible. I want this to fit in there, and it's not going to. So I'm going to have to cut this down just a tad. Yes, it's the situation that I have is, you know, we have a very large bedroom. Our bedroom is huge. It used to be a, it used to be like a family room and we um, converted it into our master. So it's huge. We have our bed in the middle and then on one side is our computers and our, like a home office, and then our, our TV. And then the other side of the bed is my little craft corner. And it literally is a craft corner. It's a corner of our room. So it's not huge. I do a lot of work in a tiny, tiny little space. It's tiny. But you know, I don't complain because before, you know, we got married, I actually had a two bedroom condo that I lived in by myself and I had a whole room. So my husband moved in, his children moved in too, and then I didn't have that room anymore. All my stuff went into storage. So here you go. It's a pocket. See? Very easy. So there's that. And then we'll go ahead and continue on. And I'm probably going to do one more pocket. I think I only want one more pocket. Let's go ahead and attach this. And, and I know that a lot of people don't love this paper because it's not the usual graphic 45. But I love it. I think it's really fun. And I like the bright. Okay. Here we go. And attach. Let's see. I think I want this side. I try to keep it in order because then I don't have to fool with it later. All right, so I'm going to do this side, and then I'm going to do a pocket on the next side. And this time, hopefully, I won't screw it up. Looks like I'm running out of ATG. Hopefully, I will last. It's going to be close. All right. So let's go ahead and... This down. All right. And this is the side that I'm going to do a pocket. Okay? So let's see. This is too small. Let's see, I'm looking for some paper. Uh, here we go. Oh, that's an envelope. Black paper, where are you? I know I have tons, I just didn't want to, I don't want to get up, hoping that I have some enough to work with. Oh, this looks good. All right, so I'm going to cut this at six. And we'll go ahead and cut it at four and a half, so we'll end up with a four. Oops, I can't cut it at four and a half. 
So it's going to be at 4. That's how big it is. So here we go. And this is a little bit different paper. It's kind of thick. Let's find my, I'm using the Martha Stewart because it's small. So same thing as before. You're going to score, because my paper is 4 by 6, so I'm going to score on the 6 inch side at the half an inch and 5 and a half. And then I'm going to score it on the short side, the 4 inch side, at half an inch. Okay, so half an inch. Thanks. Okay, so now we're going to fold our scoring down. And once you do that, you can see that you create this um, little square. And that's what you're going to cut out. I usually cut mine out at an angle for a little tapering. That way my... It can be a little bit um, plainer, okay? So then you have this, and then that's where you go ahead and you put your score tape down on all three sides. And of course, you design it the way you want. If you want more of these little pockets, you can make one for each one. But, I mean, I find it hard sometimes to fill these envelopes, or these uh, albums, because they hold so much. I mean, I'm not kidding. You've seen the albums that I've, that I've done, even that little mini one that I showed you guys, the Hawaii one. That holds almost 30 pictures. And it's using um, the A2 size envelopes. Okay, so here we go. And here's my paper that I'm going to use to mat. So this is, I believe, it's three and a half. Yeah, it's three and a half by the five. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my paper. So here's the part that's going to go here. And then this needs to be cut down just a tad so that it will fit. So I'll just cut that down a tad so we can get that to fix. And that's the thing, you're going to have to adjust your paper as needed to make it fit your sizes because, you know, it's not an exact science. The paper you use is going to be a little bit different. You might have cut down your envelopes bigger or smaller than I do. So it just depends. So you just mat the way that you like. Some people, you know, like a bigger border. Some people do not. Okay, so there's that. And this is just going to fit right here. All right. Almost done with the with the matting. And okay, so there we go. Okay, it's a little bit. I don't know what the deal is on that. I only like how that looks a little bit off. I'm going to adjust that a little bit so it's not like that. It's a little better. Okay. So here this is. Right there. And my last envelope, I have barely enough ATG. Let's hope I make it because there's nothing worse than having to change the eighth ATG on camera. I just won't do it. <laughs> I will stop it and I will say see you on the next video because I just don't like doing it. 
because sometimes I get tangled up in the HEG and it's not a pretty sight. And someone will give me a thumbs down for being lame. So let's go ahead and get the last bits. Oh no! I'm going to use this because I don't, like I said, I will not do it on camera. Okay, let's do the last of this. All right. It, I almost made it. So I'm going to set this ATG aside because I will not be using this for the rest of this video. And I'm going to talk about the spine. And then we're going to do the spine together on the next video. Okay, so here we have all of our pages. Okay, so here they are, ready to go. Now we need a spine. So here is my spine that I have started. And my spine, this one is measuring seven by eight and a half. All right, so now we're gonna have to get out our scoreboard and we're gonna have to do some scoring. And because my board is kind of short, I'm gonna have to kind of, we'll see how that works. So you're gonna start your first score mark at one inch. My next score mark is going to be at one and a half, and then two. Okay, that makes one place for your, one of your pages to go, okay? Then it's two and a quarter. That's your gusset. That allows you space for your pages to move and for you to add any kind of embellishments, add your pictures, okay? Then we need another half an inch. So that's going to be, let's see, two and a quarter, so it's two and three quarters by the next one is three and a quarter. And there's your second one. Let's see, three and a quarter. So three and a half, and then it's four, and then it's four and a half. Let's count how many that is. One, two, three. And then we need the four and three quarters. And then it's five and a quarter, five and three quarters. Let's see, it's one, two, three, four. I need one more. So then it's going to be six. So then I'm going to flip my paper around. And now I'm going to have to work backwards. Yikes. So I'm at six. I'm sorry, this is at the um, two and a half. So working backwards. That's at two and one and a half. Okay? And that is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we've we've done that at five. Alright, so to make the half an inch ones become place that your page is attached to, okay? The quarter inch, see that becomes the place that your page is attached to, and then the quarter inch becomes your gusset. That's the space between your pages that allow your book to move freely, allows you to put your pages in there, and so on. So what I do, make it easier for me, is I take the two half an inch ones and I fold them in a mountain fold. Okay, that's how I do it. And this takes practice. I hate to tell you there's no like magic way because like Kathy Orta, the way she does it is not the way I do it. And you know, she holds hers different and puts her tape in a different order and you know, so you gotta do what works for you. So that's what we've got, okay? All right, so once you've done that, you want to attach your half inch pieces together, okay? So you're going to put score tape on one grouping of two, okay? And then when you put that together, you've got this, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and attach all my little pieces like this. 
boom. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to finish our spine and we're going to attach our pages.